Hello and welcome back and that's right today I want to talk about 10 gigabit ethernet but more importantly I want to talk about this this is not a Sylvanian family skipping rope this is an M.2 to 10 GBE adapter this is effectively trying to challenge the necessity of things like this PCIe upgrade cards that allow you to add 10 gigabit ethernet to a system via a PCIe slot but we know damn well when it comes to more compact systems like these PCIe slots are actually not as common as you think and as we're getting more and more systems rolling out these days with a combination of M.2 and SATA connectors for your storage, people in the East have been working on the ability to take advantage of the M.2 slot for more than just storage. Now, I'll say straight away, this is not significantly cheaper than a PCIe alternative. That is not the point. You can get it right now uh, from IOCrest on AliExpress for about 65 to 70 nicker. They're not the only ones rocking these out, but it was the one that we bought. I'm sure the AliExpress purchasing will be on screen. But the reason we went for it is twofold. One, we wanted to see what the performance was it was capable of, because the USB 4 to 10G adapter that we reviewed a week or two ago was a bit middling. But also, we want to test NAS compatibility. We want to see if we can get this working on any of the current NAS platforms. We'll get to that in the second half of the video, but for now, talking a little bit more about the hardware in here. This is an M.2 mounted with an Aquantia controller. Man alive, those seagulls are crazy today. Um, the Aquantia controller in here, the AQC113, is one that's utilized on here. And there is a very thin ribbon that you have to attach on your own. Little tip for those watching this on your own reviews, make sure the blue is up. Um, after that, it goes directly into a 10 gig NIC. Get that controller there, between the two of them, that cable is what's transferring our data. Now, also keep in mind when you are mounting this in a system, this ribbon is in an incredibly unhelpful spot poking out from the side. More on that later on. But it ultimately means this is actually a little chunkier than you might think for the M.2 slot on a number of your systems. Now, when we got this set up inside a Windows 10 system, we ran a te uh, we ran test with Atto, AJA, and some Windows transfers. Let's start with the good news, AJA. Uh, we did uh, three separate file sizes from small to medium to large, and we were able to fully saturate that one gigabyte per second point quite a lot. Not the whole time, but definitely quite a lot from the previous video again thank you so much you know exactly who you are when i say this uh, about noticing there at the end we don't have an mvme connector there we have a two indent sata connector there which definitely poses something of a problem when it comes to bandwidth now on top of that when we're talking about this we move forward from the atto disk benchmark testing and then we've got to talk about aja aja was incredibly inconsistent uh, from that i think we went from a 64 meg and one and 256 meg file all the way up to 16 gig and we saw numbers between the six and 800 mark there we didn't expect full saturation we tend to not really find that on aja but i thought it'd be higher than what we saw and when we did a windows file transfer test of around 12 gig of data Again, the numbers were pretty inconsistent there. They were definitely better than you know gigabit internet, but we were expecting 10 gigabit or a gigabyte being transferred uh, per second at the very least. Unfortunately, that is just not something we saw. But you probably came to this video because you want to know if you can upgrade your NAS with this thing. And I'll be straight with you, in most cases, the answer is going to be no. Let me explain. Starting for all of the tests, we'll go with our first test out that was using the Asus Store Flash Store 6 system. It's got, you know, six, I think it was the 12 Pro actually, it was 12 M.2 NVMEs, the six port one as we well, I tried to record before this video, uh, with the 12 port system there that already had ADM installed on it, I went ahead and installed this inside one of the available bays there. I wasn't able to close the lid, of course, not only because of the adapter, but because the height of the uh, actual M.2 itself. And unfortunately, regardless of whether I interfaced into directly into the 10 GBE NIC or interfaced into the Acer Store itself, in both occasions, the system would not work. Now, it wasn't a case of it not working at all. What would happen is, regardless of whether I was interfacing with this NIC or one of the NICs on the system, regardless of which one I chose, and the fact that there were four NVMEs inside the system that already had ADM and a RAID 5, the system would always just see no drive. For some reason, this interfered with the entire utility of the PCB internally there. That is something that's fairly critical. That's not just it not working, 
because in its defense, I was able to interface with the Asus store with this inside, but unfortunately, no more than that. Moving over to QNAP, I went ahead and installed this inside a TS2562, um, um, sorry, 264. And unfortunately, I got nothing. As soon as I put the adapter inside the system, what I got was a prolonged non-stop beep. And it would only happen with this inside, regardless of which Nick I interfaced with, which is a real pain in the bum. Now, moving forward, I looked into Synology, and unfortunately, very similar results with the Synology there. I first tried to utilize um, a DS, I believe it was a DS920, uh, an interface with the base level M.2 NVMe slots on the bottom of it. It just would not Boot. Then I went ahead and used a 1631 Plus that had a better placement of uh, M2 NVMEs because getting those into the original DS920 was a nightmare. They actually fit inside the 1621, but unfortunately, again, I was not able to interface with the system in any meaningful way. I was able to interface with the device if the NIC was in the back of the system, and this was you know connected to the base but unfortunately as soon as they got into the storage manager i was still unable to view this that might be something that some entrepreneurial folk over on github can take advantage of then i switched over to a u green nas the u green nas i went ahead and installed this in the base level uh, m.2 slot of the dxp 4800 plus and unfortunately regardless of whether i interfaced uh, uh, a network cable into the adapter or into the slot inside the system it didn't work as long as this was inside the system would only show as a red status light and inaccessible and it wouldn't even go past provisional boot which is super annoying now that's all the bad news the good news is unraid and true nas work like a charm when i say true nas it was true nas core i'm sorry true nas scale and when it comes to unraid that was using the 7.1 beta ultimately between the two of them with that cigar going nuts up there do you know i'm going to leave that in um Regardless, those two were the only platforms that were not only able to see this device, but could actually interface with the system with it. And both of them were giving me 10,000 megabits per second or 10 gig. So it's good to know that at least it works in those DIY systems, but unsurprisingly, when it came to turnkey now solutions, because of the lack of the driver in their pre-built pre operating systems being included, it just was not visible out the gate. And there was no guarantees that even if you could soft patch the drivers into it, as we've seen happen previously before with, say, 5 GBU to USB adapters and more, there was still no guarantees that you're going to be able to use this on a turnkey now system. At the very least, if you are running a very compact Unraid or TrueNAS scale system, I can confirm that this will be usable. I just have certain question marks about just how capable this is of achieving that 1000 megabytes per second. Remember, when I had this installed inside my PC system, I had it on a Gen 3 times 4 slot. There was all the bandwidth in the world for it to take advantage of, but still, nonetheless, it wasn't able to hit those dizzy heights that I wanted it to see. Nonetheless, if you are looking for a convenient M.2 means to upgrade your DIY NAS system, this is it. There's no other option in the market, realistically. You can get that USB external adapter. That may well work on your Unraid or True NAS system. We're currently in the middle of testing that particular IO Crest adapter in the background. But nonetheless, for more compact systems where you want an interfacing NIC on the rear, this is a decent little choice. Just keep in mind that its performance numbers are questionable. And although it's not the most expensive device it is not cheaper than a pcie card so unless you want this for convenience and scaling down on your system i would still recommend a pcie card overall thank you so much for watching thank you so much seagulls for knackering this video i hope you have a great weekend everyone and i'll see you next time